We are going to continue our work in Mendelian genetics and we're going to do this using a tool called a Punnett square. Now in this case the Punnett square we're going to use is called a monohybrid cross and when we're looking at a monohybrid cross we are looking at a single trait. So in this case the example here is flower color and when we do our work we're going to use this monohybrid cross to look at a single trait. Now if we go back to Mendel's work, Mendel had these nice charts laid out and these charts were very uh, thorough but we are looking for a more simplistic way to figure out genetic outcomes. So if we go back and remind ourselves of what Mendel did, Mendel had the parent generation, we called that the P generation. The P generation crossed two pure parents for different variables. So we had the tall plant and the short plant, and these were both homozygous, capital T, capital T, crossed with a little t, little t. And when we cross these two parents, we get the F1 generation, called filial one, remembering that filial meant offspring, or son or daughter. The F1 generation, all offspring came out heterozygous, but showed the dominant trait. So we had all tall plants. All of these tall plants had the heterozygous genotype, capital T, little t. And when he crosses the F1 generation, we end up with the F2 generation, filial 2 generation, showing three dominant tall plants and one recessive short plant. And this came to be known as Mendel's ratio or law of dominance that the dominant trait shows up in a ratio of 3 to 1 or 75 percent. These offspring were capital T, capital T, homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, capital T, lowercase t, and one homozygous re recessive, lowercase t, lowercase t. Now we are going to use a tool that simplifies this process. It is called a Punnett square, and in this case we're doing what is called a monohybrid cross and it's going to demonstrate for us the possible outcomes for a single trait. Now what we mean by possible outcomes is if you flip a coin you have a possible outcome of a head or a tail. Now if you get heads on your first flip of the coin that does not mean you have to get a tail on the next offspring or next flip of the coin. What we're looking at here is each flip of the coin, just like each offspring in a cross, has the same genetic probability of these outcomes. So that's why it's called the possible outcomes for a single trait. Now even though we have two variables here, we have green pods and yellow pods, we're only looking at the trait for pod color. So the single trait is pod color two variables, a green pod or a yellow pod. Now let's remind ourselves of the fact that Mendel used peas because they were easy to cross-pollinate, short generations, but most importantly seven different variables that were easy to distinguish. Tall versus short, capital T versus lowercase t, round versus wrinkled, a capital R allele versus the lowercase r allele. We had yellow, capital Y, or green, lowercase y. The dominant green seed coat versus the white recessive seed coat. We also had pod shape, inflated full pods, or we had constricted pods, the lowercase allele n. Then we had pod color, capital G, for green, and lowercase g for yellow, and then flower position. Flowers on the side of the stem called axial, capital A, and flowers at the end of the stem called terminal, the lowercase a recessive trait. So to go over that vocabulary again, alleles are letters that represent the trait. The capital A allele for axial is the dominant allele. The lowercase a for terminal is the recessive allele. 
The combination of alleles is called the genotype. So we have a homozygous dominant genotype. That's capital A, capital A. Homo means same. And in that case, the phenotype or phenotype is axial because the dominant trait is present. The capital A lowercase a is heterozygous, hetero meaning different. Whenever we have a heterozygous outcome, we have the dominant trait showing through, axial. And then we have lowercase a, lowercase a. This is homozygous recessive. Again, the term homo meaning same. And in this case, when it is homozygous recessive, that is when we see the recessive outcome. And in this case, that would be terminal. So once again, genotype is the allele pair or the group of that individual. This is the genetic information for that organism. So we have several examples here, homozygous dominant, capital A, capital A, homozygous recessive, lowercase g, lowercase g, heterozygous, capital C, lowercase c, heterozygous, capital R, lowercase r, homozygous dominant, capital N, capital N, capital Y, lowercase y, that would be heterozygous, and then we have a capital T, lowercase t, also heterozygous. The phenotype is the physical outcome, the actual description of the allele group or pair. So in this case, these are the traits that are present in the organism, whether it be yellow peas, whether it be constricted or wrinkled peas. Here we have a green wrinkled pea and a yellow wrinkled pea the green pod color with the green peas, or when we have constricted pods over here on the right. So let's look at a, a sample problem, and this sample problem gives us two parents from the information. We're going to cross a homozygous dominant axial flower with a homozygous recessive flower. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what are the genotypes that we are dealing with. So homozygous dominant means two alleles that are the same, homo, and in this case we're using the allele A for axial. So the first parent is capital A, capital A, homozygous dominant. The second parent is homozygous recessive, again homo meaning same, but it is the recessive trait, so that is where we get lowercase a, lowercase a. Now, if we remember, when we form gametes, Mendel gave us a law called the law of segregation. So the alleles will separate, they will segregate into the gametes, because remember, the gametes only carry half of the information. So we are going to segregate the alleles for the first parent on top, capital A on the first column, capital A over the second column. For the second parent, they go on the left. So that's a lowercase a in the first row and a lowercase a for the second row. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the actual cross. And what we're going to work with is we're going to work with the alleles that have been segregated. So for the first possible offspring, we take the first allele from the first parent and the first allele from the second parent, and we get a heterozygous offspring. We then take the second allele from the first parent and the first allele from the second parent, and we get another heterozygous offspring. Remember that these are only possible offspring. These are not exact. We're not going to have four offspring every time. This is just the possibility for each individual offspring. And as you see, I'm just pairing up the letters as you did with, a, say, a multiplication table back when you were in grammar school. Now, once we have all the possible offspring, what we work with is called genetic ratios. And there are two genetic ratios we work with here. The first is called the genotypic ratio. And the genotypic ratio always follows this order. Homozygous dominant first, heterozygous second, homozygous recessive third. 
So if we look at the offspring, we're going to notice that there are zero capital A, capital A's. There are four capital A, lowercase a, heterozygous, and there are zero homozygous recessive, lowercase a, lowercase a. So the possible genetic genotypic ratio, the genotypic ratio, the G colon, is 0 to 4 to 0. The second ratio we deal with is called the phenotypic ratio, the P colon, phenotypic ratio. We are looking whether we're going to get dominant or recessive. So the order is always dominant first, recessive second. And in this case, all of our offspring have the capital A. So all of our offspring are going to demonstrate or show the dominant trait. So in this case, our ratio is 4 dominant to 0 recessive. So once again, there are two ratios we work with. The genotypic ratio. The genotypic ratio always follows the order homozygous dominant, heterozygous, homozygous recessive, capital A, capital A, capital A, lowercase a, lowercase, lowercase a. Always in this order, always in this pattern. The phenotypic ratio is always dominant to recessive. Dominant first, recessive second. So in the case of our example, axial to terminal.